Hello, everybody. My name is Alessandro Laurenza, and I'm senior technical engineer of Medaset Europe. Um, in the today's session, I will uh, present uh, very quickly, uh, uh, introduce very quickly Mada CIM, and I will, uh, will show more in detail a practical application of this software uh, for a pre-stress concrete uh, box bridge. Uh, model. Uh, so let's let's dive into the before into very quick introduction. CIM uh, is a civil specialized 3D model software created by Midas to to fulfill the needings of uh, uh, the civil engineer who need to model in the infrastructure project sector. So. In, they will need, rather than a floor grid uh, layers um, logic uh, software, they will need more modeling based on layout and segment. And in this case, CIM, uh, it, it is more suitable. The program logic is uh, based on several, a few several uh, interface work, work work interface from the user section where you create user section, point library, curve library, where you create the single object that need to be assembled in the assembly unit mode. The assembly unit mode is assigned to the layout to create the whole model. Just to review what can contain uh, assembly units, not only structural, but also several kinds of objects you can include. There are uh, library objects already contained in the catalogs in the catalogs of uh, Midas CIM. In this case, uh, I will take uh, only rubber bearings. I will show only rubber bearings in my model. The rest, uh, the box gilder and the supports, uh, I will create from scratch basically. The learning. Uh, it's very important uh, uh, because it's the first the first step. Uh, as as this software is not the uh, same as other software, you can learn on this website, uh, starting with tutorials from basic to intermediate to advanced. And uh, personally, I learn a lot also navigating through the function, which uh, uh, are in you can click in the navigation bar in the same website. And basically, he will, uh, you will uh, be uh, reroute to the uh, all the function you need. In that particular case, with a little bit of explanation, uh, for me, it's more useful sometimes than tutorial. So, but it's up to you the choice. The main future is uh, the creation of analysis modeling. We will, we will, uh, we will uh, explore this future in my practical example. Uh, another future is the creation from CIM. Uh, which is a 3D model uh, of 2D drawings, uh, thanks to the included uh, CAD software, uh, 2D CAD software, which is called CAD Infra Design. This comes inside CIM when 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 you buy it, and uh, this is just a short view of what you can do. As you can see, it's very it's very it's very clear. Some 3D modeling, uh, you have 3D modeling of bolts, special future to model 3D of bolts, connection, thickness, reinforcement, and tendons. I will show in my uh, practical application how to model the tendons. Parametric modeling. Uh, this is shown uh, how to parameterize a cross-section, but uh, in my example, I will parameterize something else. So be aware that parametric modeling is very fully supported, is very advanced in the C CIM. You have base parameter, constraint parameter, so you can parameterize any kind of member, any kind of object uh, just into the software without using external uh, uh, platforms. Uh, one very request, especially recently, is the terrain slope modeling. Many, many clients ask about this. Yes, you can model the existing ground level, importing 
topographic info, but you can also model the geostratigraphy of the, of the soil, importing border information. And once you have your, your existing uh, ground model, uh, you, you can create uh, using special culture inside the software and bank mines excavation and also extract uh, quantity quantity takeoff. The clash check as well, I want to mention because it's very important. Uh, it's possible this function is, is implemented in the software and uh, it's very useful to detect uh, uh, into the model all the clashes between uh, reinforcement cables, uh, anchorage and uh, so on. This is very important fun function for uh, very detailed uh, models and complex one. So now let's dive into the PSC uh, box girder uh, model that um, uh, I have used as an uh, example uh, to the application of uh, some future, but not only the application of the future itself, also to make understand the, uh, the engineers, which would be involved with this kind of software, how, how, how to think what is the logic in the practical way. So I will introduce firstly the uh, bridge case that uh, I, have, uh, I have modeled. Uh, the modeling steps, uh, the modeling future that I have implemented in the particular case, which uh, which of course are, will be not enough for to develop a full model for the analysis, but uh, in order to keep this webinar short enough, uh, I, I, I selected only 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 a few few parts to be shown. And uh, eventually, uh, I will show uh, the generation of the analysis model for MIDA Civil uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the, the some advantages, some limitations when, when this, this model is generated. Uh, the perceptive box girder bridge is shown here. The drawings is a three span um, carved uh, box girder, continuous box girder. Um, um, the typical section is one cell box girder. Uh, um, uh, the total height of the section is 2.2 meters. Uh, the width of the bottom is 5.5. These, these are uh, the, the dimension of the, uh, the typical section that uh, is along the bridge. Uh, after I assumed for simplicity that there are five meters at the ends of every uh, span where, where the bottom uh, slab is tapered until a max. And, uh, and uh, the diaphragm section is uh, extend for, for uh, 80 centimeter in correspondence of the, of the, um, of the intermediate supports. Uh, the box girder is fully constrained to the intermediate supports. Uh, and these uh, intermediate supports are uh, um, uh, constituted by a wall, 80 centimeter thick, uh, and 5.5 uh, and, uh, meter wide. The, uh, the wall height of the supports is variable. The first support is 3.65, second wall is 4.5. Uh, these are the dimension of the slab, uh, seven meter transversal dimension, and uh, 5.6, the uh, smaller dimension piles. I assumed eight meter height piles, and they have a diameter of 1.2 meter. Um, uh, in the model, I will uh, I will not uh, so uh, I will not model the abutments. Uh, 
the model will be uh, will will include only um, bearings with elastic links and uh, with supports instead of uh, end abutments for simplicity, of course. These are the cross section developed at the uh, um, at the end of the transition. So uh, this section basically when the uh, uh, um, bottom slab tapered uh, ends, and this is in red also is the uh, uh, outline of the uh, box diaphragm. These these were were were. Uh, were drafted in in uh, in the CAD drawing directly. Um, the box girder is made of uh, 56 tendons. Now uh, these tendons are uh, uh, pre-stressed in different construction stage. The construction stage analysis, the construction stage uh, uh, model in CIM is uh, is not shown. Will not be developed in this kind of model for for simplicity, but be aware it's possible to create also construction stage uh, uh, stages in um, CIM before 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 exporting the model to civil. These are the data of the of the um, of the tendons. These are shown in the window of civil, but are I will show later that are. Uh, the same data, uh, similar in a similar way, can be used in in CIM. Number of strand 19 of every tendon, and uh, duct diameter uh, 10 centimeter. There are in total 36 uh, tendons uh, located only in the in the infinite wall of the of the box girder in the pairs. This is this is these are windows shown by civil because this example model I took from civil as example and uh, and after we develop uh, independently in CIM. The modeling steps, the modeling feature I will show. So uh, for this practical example, it will be the first of all the layout generation uh, that can be performed uh, manually inside the software or imported. I will use the import function, which is quite straightforward. The creation of a point library for the intermediate supports, the creation of the curve library for the VSC box girder, uh, the creation of the assembly unit of the world bridge combining the previous library objects, the modeling of boundary condition in terms of rigid links, Elastic links and uh, uh, supports. Uh, the, I will cover also the modeling of stress tendons uh, based on layout stationing input. So basically, uh, the the tendons would be in, imported by coordinates using the uh, station and the horizontal and the vertical offset of the tendons along all over the uh, box girder. I will create the analysis case in CIM uh, needed to be exported uh, to civil and check uh, very, very quickly how the model in civil is developed. And uh, I will discuss some adjustments, some limitation uh, on this interoperability between CIM and civil. So as explained, let's uh, let's start uh, with the setting up of the bridge layout alignment. Uh, in, uh, in the, 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 this setup in CIM, it's very, very, very detailed. You can set up the horizontal, the vertical alignment, the subdivision of the layout in segments, and the super elevation as well. Uh, these are the final. Uh, uh, display of the window so now let's let's see how how i i develop this so this is the the the, the, the starting from a blank model blank uh, blank file uh, i already set up the materials as you can see the concrete steel material also the tendons the rebars the steel the steel is a uh, tendons is according to euro codes the layout I imported from CAD. Uh, I set up a layout of uh, with a frequency radius of uh, 
500 meters, a 115 meters of extension, which is the total bridge length. Uh, the, first, the first step is to export this as a DWG because CAD ID uh, has a different extension. So once I create the DWG uh, file, I, I create the layouts. I call it uh, bridge, bridge layout, bridge one. See some uh, vertical bridge. And there are three types of uh, creation. In this case, I create my DWG, DWG. As you can see, it's uh, the importing is quite straightforward. I, it could be created directly inside, but I prefer DWG in order to have uh, this kind of uh, top view when uh, when uh, when I use the view in, C, in CIM. It's possible to create the vertical alignment. In this case, uh, I create a vertical alignment uh, uh, arc and uh, with 1%, uh, this is, ex this is uh, absolutely uh, just to show by example how it's easy it is and how it's easy it's shown. Um, a vertical alignment with a radius of curvature of 2,000 meter and 1% uh, in, in slopes, longitudinal slope in the in the first part, one minus one in, in the second part of the bridge. The segment, uh, in order to subdivide the bridge according to the span, uh, is it's very important to to use the segments to define the segments. First span 35 meters, second span 43 their span um, uh, 35 meters as well. It's possible also to create a sort of uh, super elevation. So be aware about this. In this model, I didn't, I want, I didn't don't want to create super elevation for simplicity, but it's, uh, it's very possible. And uh, so uh, this, this is, um, once, once the layout is is is, uh, is fine for you, you can you can uh, you can uh, save. You can close the layout window, apply, and uh, here is the top view, of the layout. As you can see, it's very quick to show. And once done this, we can we can save it. I save it as a first step, and uh, and uh, we can we can we can go to the next uh, the next slide, which creation of the point library for the intermediate supports. Mm. The creation of the point library it's uh, it's pretty so for the the three D geometry itself. Uh, some some more uh, advanced uh, skills need when you want to uh, parameterize some 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 parts or the total parts of the this object. In this case, in this case is what what I want to show. Uh, so first first uh, first uh, I will uh, I will not show step by step modeling because it's quite time consuming. I will show the the the, the first support that I've created and I've saved as an independent uh, point object. And after, and after uh, uh, I will show what I've created. And after I will show how, how I have parameterized uh, the uh, wall height of the, of the support. Uh, uh, keeping keeping uh, uh, the same dimension and the same, the same lengths of the, uh, below or beneath objects like slab and and uh, and uh, and files. Um, so let's uh, let's open let's open the file that uh, I have. As you can see, it is already a point uh, library object. Let's delete it, okay? So we have only the layout in this case with all the material already set up. 
and that's it. We don't have any 3D objects. Um, let's import because I already created the uh, one one of the two uh, intermediate supports. As as you can see, it has an intermediate uh, in uh, independent uh, extension called GLZ, the 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 CIM model file in general as CIMZ extension. Once we, we have imported this, we can see what I've created. I've created, I've used, I've used the, the model function or the concrete members uh, which are implemented into the software. So for the support wall, I've used <coughs> the uh, wall function and uh, vertical wall. Uh, the slab, I use the concrete slab function for the pile i use the column but uh, in order to because i have regular regular shapes regular members in this case but of course if you have irregular or general rhizmoids concrete members so any kind of members you can create it by yourself using this other uh, future inside the modeling of the of the of the the points and the curve library um the, the, the these, these are the properties of this vertical wall that I've used. As you can see, the thickness is already parameterized. You don't need to parameterize the thickness. Uh, to the to this member is already assigned the category of uh, structural member member, and the material you can choose among the concrete material you you have you have already set up at the beginning. Uh, the slab as well as a thickness of 1.5 meter. And I assign also a thickness to properly model it, uh, the, connection, uh, the connection with the wall. Uh, the pile, the pile as a concrete, uh, where assign a concrete column cross section solid round, which is among the database shapes of the software. Center to center, 1.2 meter diameter, 8 meter, 8 meter um, length. So uh, this is quite quite intuitive, and straightforward to to model inside the inside the inside the, the software. What is less straightforward and need to be learned more deeply is the uh, the, the understanding of constraint points, other constraint points, and especially. Uh, uh, the, the, the parameterization, the steps needed to parameterize, in this case, the wall height. Uh, in fact, if I, if I go, if I select this, the center of the uh, uh, center bottom of the wall, you can see that I have used a parameter of the coordinate Z of this. And uh, and uh, and uh, as you can see, it's minus minus three point six five. That is the height of the uh, first uh, first pier wall. Uh, why I needed to parameterize? Because in a bridge you have several supports with different heights. Uh, in this case, it can be handy to show uh, to to create this kind of parameterization. To do this, we need to use what is called uh, uh, multi-point uh, link entity and use of constraint points. First of all, the in the entity tab, you can see that uh, you have all the uh, constraint entity and the expression entity. Expression entity. Uh, so in order to to, to 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 check what kind of constraint you have, what kind of link to this constraint you have. Uh, for the other other objects, so in this case, uh, the expression it means that all the objects are linked to this constraint point, the top and the bottom. The bottom is uh, is a is an uh, is so called other constraint point because the co top constraint point is called default constraint point because it's used as a default 
a reference point for the wall, wall object that you have created in order to insert it properly into the wall model. I want to show this video uh, that uh, I used to create uh, uh, these multipoint linked, uh, linked uh, expressions in order to properly parameterize the wall. So I can go in the So as you can see, I will go quickly. Uh, uh, so this, this uh, as I explained, uh, these are the two constraint points, but how were created. The first constraint point at the top is by default already created. These are the parameter that I already showed. Um, so in the, the other constraint point, the, the uh, the multi-link expression entities needs to be created with the most this multi-point uh, multi-points uh, expression entity future. Uh, if you want to learn about uh, this, it's better you you use the guide that uh, explain every what uh, every 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 uh, parameter that you need to every step that you need to do. You uh, you just um, Click F1 and you will uh, go redirected to the to the guide. Uh, so the first the first operation was to select the target, all the all the all the support, of course. The default constraint point is is this one, but is as a, as as I told you, is already included at the beginning when you create the, uh, the, the, the point library object is the, is, is, is the origin point, basically, of the point library object. The other constraint point that I will use to constrain all the other geometry uh, is the bottom of the wall, because I want to parameterize this. So I want to that the other object follow the, 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 the coordinates that uh, follow the position of this without changing their own geometry. So in order to do that, you need to select it as an other constraint point. The, the, the geometry vertex are the vertex of the object that are, uh, uh, need to follow basically this constraint point. Once created this, we can see that, uh, that yeah, uh, if, if I go and, and change uh, the, parameter of the tier eight wall uh, to which is is linked the coordinate z of of this constraint point that I have defined before as a negative height as you can see uh, uh, in this case I change to, to to 10 meter sorry yeah I will change to 10 we see that the object is uh, automatically changed only the wall height, but all the other objects, the length of the pipes remain eight meters and the, and the slab as well remain 1.5 meter thickness, nothing has changed. Yeah, and, and, and so, and so uh, this, is, this, is, this is quite uh, important to show in my opinion. Once, once you have created one, uh, if we come back to the model, we see that the first, the first one is saved and as a, a height of 3.65, you can, you can import again the same. Uh, you can, you can import, you can save this point library object like I did and re-import to create a second one. So, uh, we can we can uh, uh, modify it. We can we can change the name to support peer two. And in this case, we will assign to the to the bottom uh, the string point. We will assign the second parameter, which is uh, we want to be uh, the height of the peer two, which is four point five meters. And as you can see, it is automatically adjusted. We save it. So we have already the point library object created, ready to be uh, included in the assembly unit first and, and after uh, in the wall model. 
Um, so we save this and we come back to the presentation. The second step is uh, we need to create uh, we need to create the box gear that the, uh, in, in this case is a curve library which has a linear extension. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, the same I have already the same way I already created a curve library uh, specific for this box gear. I created from scratch using uh, the user section mode where I have imported uh, uh, the tree section that I have for the typical along the span, the, uh, the transition end, and uh, the diaphragm, the diaphragm, uh, the diaphragm section, which is uh, in, uh, included in the 80 centimeter across uh, the, the supports. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, yeah, uh, after, after. Uh, I use also constraint planes and constraint paths. Uh, this, this, the first part, uh, it's quite intuitive and it's quite straightforward, uh, similar to the to create to the modeling of the peer of the point a library object. What is less intuitive is Satri to create the constraint. In this case, for the for the for the gilder, uh, we are talking about constraint planes and constraint paths because as a linear linear object. These this, this constraints are very important in order to define the parts, control and define the parts of the girder that must be fixed, the part of the girders that must be variable according to the span length. Because we will be creating just a, a, an object that must be course, adaptable to the span length. In this case, it's very important uh, to have the skill to, 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 to know uh, the knowledge about these planes and constraint paths. Uh, um, let's let's go in the model. So first, first I will show uh, how to import what how to import the box gear typical, which I have created. So let's see, let's see what I've created. So in this case, I've created a piece a piece of box gear there. Uh, with uh, 40 centimeter, 40 centimeter uh, of 40 centimeter of the section which is uh, the diaphragm, 44.6 centimeter the section between the uh, between the uh, typical and the precision end where only the bottom slab is tapered. As you can see, it's fully implemented. And uh, after the typical section, uh, extend between these two planes and after again. What is important to, to, to know this, uh, to, to, to know about this, um, so let's close this tool. So let's see before the tree cross section. This I have imported directly from uh, the CAD. I use again the CAD ID to draft this uh, to, to save as a DWG, to import and to create a user section concrete. In this case, I did a mistake that I want to highlight. So, uh, and this is very important, so it can be helpful. Instead of using PSC value section, I use general section. And this is a mistake if you want to afterwards uh, design uh, this section as a using the PSC future in Mida Civil. So be aware that you need to use PSC value. When you use PSC value, you need to use the parameter which are defined T1, T2, T2 uh, BTFC. This is a window extracted by Civil, are the same, defined the same way. So it's who is confident with civil PSC uh, knows already what kind of parameter you have to put. So in this case, I I, I didn't uh, I didn't uh, use user section was 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 a mistake that I recognize after, but it's easy to to fix. Um, so the three uh, cross section created and after I created the the the. the uh, the concrete members parts 
Now I wanted for this specific uh, breach, I wanted that for every span five uh, the, the, the 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 stretch where 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 start the the tapering the transition must be from five meter of of, of by the ends of the of the of the of the span. In this case, I needed to create this one. I need to, to create this kind of planes. So this kind of planes uh, is a constraint planes that I define in this case is 40 centimeters. This one is for the uh, for the uh, diagram, diaphragm, sorry. But in this case, if I use this, they use the constraint plane, as you can see, I use five meter constraint to the start points as a reference. So uh, in order to do this as a fixed plane uh, located five meters from the start point, I needed to use by distance, but you can use also by ratio. Uh, you can also locate this, uh, this, um, this plane uh, by ratio using a uh, by ratio function, which is basically if you want to locate uh, this plane uh, uh, proportionally to the to the to the to the to the span length, so this will be fused. You can you can you can do by I don't know for example ten percent. You can use by ten percent of of the of the so in this uh, of the of the span, and you can use this function. Uh, so these are very important. The entity I've created so are is. First, there is this so-called, the, the first plane is called default constraint plane and the end constraint plane are the, by default already inserted in the curve object. After you have the other constraint plane that I created manually, as I said, uh, in, order, in order to be this fix, I, I, had to, I had to create this constraint plane fix to the start point, this plane. And this plane, as you can see, if I select this plane, Constraint plane is fixed to the to the uh, and and in this case is yeah it's fixed to the end end point. So let me see again. And these are the expression that which are used to link all the all the concrete member created to the to the uh, to the path because after to assign to create a 3D member you need to uh, create uh, to you need to assign this to a path. The paths are automatically created uh, once once you create uh, between every plane there are there is a path. It's, it's, is, 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 is by default, since I inserted the cross section with the center top, by default, this path uh, follow the, the center top of the gear, that, which is what I want. So this is the procedure basically uh, I've used to, to, to define the box gear there. And the and the and the setting up of the constraint plane and the constraint pipes to control the the variable parts and the fixed parts of the girder. Next step now will be will be to to combine this uh, the points and the curve library object. So the the intermediate supports and the and the girder that we have created, the typical, the typical uh, girder span we have created, which we have assigned a uh, um, theoretical span, theoretical length. Uh, I, I already said that I will not uh, model the abutments, but in case you want to model, there are uh, catalogs of abutments, which you can create very quickly the typical abutment with wing walls and other kind of abutments into, into the database of CIM, or you need to create uh, similarly at what I show for the peer, if you want to create from scratch or you want to import 
you need to use a combination of uh, uh, walls, slab, um, prismoid uh, members in this case, like the wing wall. So it would be it would be in the same way. The assembly unit of the bridge. So in this case, uh, uh, for this kind of bridge, uh, I I I prefer uh, to create the assembly unit the straight unit of the bridge as the wall bridge because was more in this specific case was uh, more convenient. Um, this is possible uh, in the assembly unit instead of having uh, uh, constrained paths or constrained uh, plates like in the curves uh, object, we need to deal with constraint points and constraint spaces. So the constraint points and constraint spaces uh, are necessary to uh, input, uh, define the span in the proper way of the bridge and to assign the uh, point uh, object and the curve object properly. So as, as you can see from this lab, this is pretty intuitive how was made. Uh, let's let's do it again in our model. As you can see, we don't have in the base mode. We don't have nothing shown because we have only the layout in the object, the data because the point object, the curve object are created as data, as data, and uh, and we need to assign this. First of all, let's let's create the straight unit of our bridge. So in this case. As you can see, we have a, we will we will uh, we will uh, give this the name to the PC box. Unit. I will create only one assembly unit. So for the wall bridge, so I don't need to specify the number. And uh, in this case, the settings. By default, the length is um, if we see the space, the default spaces that are automatically created, uh, the straight spaces, are by default 10. So first of all, I want to change. So let's start from the let's let's uh, let's assume this is the starting point. So I want to I want to I want to add the first span of 30 feet, uh, 35 meter. So I need to create spaces. So the first thing to do is that we need to edit the the unit length of the first space to be 35. So this this will be. 35 and uh, I will I will uh, I will uh, um, call it supports one span one after this we need to create the following span the next span we need to use constraint space connected. So in case it will be new, uh, this, the space I will connect, uh, uh, I will create when I use connected, it will be connected to the space, the last space that I have in this assembly unit. So it will be connected to this, uh, the second uh, span, uh, the second space that I use. So I will call just span two. That will give uh, uh, 43 meters as the length of the second span. I will add it. You see now the total the total length of the assembly units is 78. So we need to create another space, which is the span three, which will be again 35 meter because it's connected to the last space, new alignment type. And so we have total length. Uh, 180 meters. So now we have created what's up here. Uh, I have, yeah, this one I don't need. 
So I save. And when I recall the PSC units, assembly units, I see that this one is located properly uh, span 355 meters. So I have everything under control. What I need to create now will be the, uh, the constraint points. So the, this will, will define the correct definition of the assignment of the girder. Now we need to define the correct definition of the assignment of the point object. So we need to create inside assembly unit mode, we need to create uh, the, some points, constraint points in this case. They will be constrained to constraint space. So we can use, for example, first constraint points. It's connected to span one. So I will call it support, support one. Uh, this follow the main constraint path, which is the, the, the sorry, the default constraint point of the assembly unit. The location by distance, I will choose uh, as a reference point, the start point of the of the of the assembly units. So for me, it would be uh, 35. So I has created the first constraint point. Uh, the second constraint point that I want to connect to the span two. It will be support two, which should be location of by distance from the start point. I want to be uh, uh, 78. So let's see, and yes, properly created. The the last one, I will uh, I will call it uh, uh, ends, just ends. So it would be the abutment two position will be connected to the base span three, and they will be uh, by distance from the start point 118 meters. Just created. So even if here, here I don't need to create any constraint points because I will not have any point library objects. So. Now let's assign this. Let's assign this uh, the object that I've already created. So, first of all, I want to say that uh, you cannot save when you have in you are in uh, in uh, in uh, some particular workspace. So you need to uh, check in the assembly unit mode in this case, and and when you are in base mode, you can save Control S and save. Save here. Uh, modify. Let's assign now the before we, uh, we need to go in the points. In this case, we will assign points library support to peer one constraint space. We need to cost, we need to select the constraint point that we want to. And the location is already, already, uh, already automatically updated. We follow that the local axis will be the same, uh, already defined in, uh, in uh, it will be the local axis of the point object will be consistent with the uh, global axis. So we don't change nothing here. We go preview. We see that support peer one was what what we we don't know we we have mistaken that uh, this must be located at the bottom of the girder so which as I hit to two point two so we need to choose minus two point two so let's see if the preview is correct yeah so you we need to assign like this so one will be like this uh, again. Let's assign also the second support, which has higher height, span two, meta space. Constraint point will be this one. Be selected, 
again 78 meter location but minus 2.2 uh, elevation review okay if you want to change the rotation of uh, of, of the of here you need to you need to play on the local axis insertion also parameter so i will show maybe later on the bearings when i will input the bearings in the in the in the in, at the at the ends of the bridge now let's assign the curve library object curve library object we have the only one created the box gilder the the template of the box gilder that has the fix five meter starting transition from uh, from both ends and so we will see if this will be correctly um, correctly implemented let's see so the first for skill to the first span we need to assign this uh, default constraint point we need to select this review seems okay so it seems after we'll see span two is one it's automatically highlighted and span three as well. Preview. Okay. Now let's see. Let's see if uh, if it was automatically uh, correctly implemented. We'll see that. Let's change the settings of the view. The view I want to set the transparency of all the concrete member mono to be 0 0.5 let's see if everything would be, be yeah so we have uh, uniform transparency so we can see where 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 the tapering starts front and let's measure This is five meter. This is forty centimeter. The, the diaphragm at the first end. Five meter will start the transition. So the first span will be twenty-five. This is correct. Same here. Should be thirty-three. Correct. In the last one 25 so so the assignment and the uh the creation of the constraint plane also for the box gear that was correct so we can close and save we still don't have the the bridge anyway shown in the base mode because the next step will be to assign the the, 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 the the assembly units to the layout in order to have the correct uh, layout shape. So once created the assembly units, uh, as so far described, we need to, we need to, of course, to assign the assembly units to our layout mm -hmm. in order to give the, the shape uh, of uh, our uh, unit straight uh, length of the bridge to, to the shape and to the length that we want. So in this case, let's go to our model. Mm. And we go in the assembly unit, we assign it. We need to assign to, we have several options. We can assign to single segments, multiple segments, or the whole layout. Uh, as, um, as I conceived this, uh, <laughs> this uh, uh, the model so far, uh, 
in, in CIM, the assembly units uh, was assembled for all the bridge for convenience. In this case, I must assign it to the wall layout. Mm -hmm. To the wall layout, we do add and we do a preview. We see that everything is, is okay and we implement. So the procedure is pretty easy. This passage is very quick. And um, and yes, we can easily easily uh, see if uh, the assembly units uh, match the the bridge layout that we have uh, chosen. Mm -hmm. The next step will be to to model the boundary condition. Uh, as we see in the base model now, in the base model we have now the real object of the bridge. So on this, on this, on this object, finally we can start with uh, refine the model directly from the base. I don't have to to go again inside the the peer, the point object, the curve library, or 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 the assembly units because uh, basically the elementary objects are already created. Now I can I can refine the model. Um, uh, as we can see, uh, there is an analysis, analysis uh, group of, of, of function in, uh, in CIM, which is dedicated to, to create a proper uh, model to be analyzed in civil. Uh, the boundary, in this case, I will show only the boundary condition assignment. And we'll start from the support. I start from the support. I will assign uh, the general support condition to the bottom files and I will assign the boundary condition fixed to the bottom of um, bearings. In the meantime, yeah, I have I have assigned also bearings. For lack of time I will not show the procedure anyway. It's pretty pretty simple as these bearings were already in the catalog of CIM. I just have to insert them in the correct, uh, correct points. Mm -hmm. I will assign the bottom the bearings. So if we go now in the front, we see that we have assigned the, the Global boundary condition to the to the model, so we can assign the local uh, boundary condition. So we need to assign elastic links to our bearings, uh, as we normally do in uh, in uh, in uh, in, um, in civil as well. So we we will start from bottom. That text, the bedding. Uh, type of links, general, rigid, tension only, compression only. Of course, we choose now general, stiffness. High stiffness in the vertical direction, local vertical. This, this bedding, I want to be fixed basically also in the transversal and not rigid in the longitudinal as we have already the peer fixed to the girder. So it will it will show this one. Same start vertex. I usually start from the bottom and vertex up. I just want now this bearing not to be stiff in the long, uh, transversal direction. And finally, let's assign also rigid link. In the same way in civil, we need to define a master node, must in this case vertex, because we don't have uh, noted elements in CM, but we have radar object and vertex. And slave vertex, let's assign the top of 
the bearings. It is straightforward, as you can see, uh, are immediately shown. So you can uh, immediately uh, check if they are correctly implemented. And that's it about boundary condition. Uh, uh, in this case, I will show just uh, um, just the, this 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 abutment. But uh, but as you can see, it's uh, the definition is pretty is pretty easy. So we have defined uh, also the boundary condition. After the boundary condition, I want to eventually show uh, the tendon template. I will do it only for one tendon. Uh, as to show the, the capability of the software and the similarities with the minor civil. In this case, the tendon coordinates for me are defined uh, in 3D coordinates and are referring to the stiffening of the bridge to the layout station. So uh, I can model it directly in the base model in the wall model as there is this possibility in this uh, workspace to model the tendons. We have possibility to model the anchorage as well. Let's, let's model directly the tendon, which is more practical, more useful for the um, analysis model. So we need to show, uh, choose before the, the tendon group. Let's say this is tendon group of the, of the CS1 uh, by layout. We select the layout reference member, select. We, let's select the girder. elements, the direction be the transversal direction of the girder. And let's add tendon group. When we uh, jump into add tendon group, first of all, we see the properties the material, it's, uh, it's already the one defined, internal post tension. We can use the uh, user tendon area, or we can choose the uh, area according to the properties of the tendon, which is 19 strands, one tendons, rack type around 10 centimeter. An ultimate strength, a yield strength, are automatically uh, calculated in this case. In the creation of the of the of the tendon, in this case, we will create one tendon in the in the inclined wall, using as a reference point uh, the bottom center of the inclined, uh, inclined wall, which has these relative coordinates to the top. As by default, the the top of the girder is the reference point because we have created the girder in that, in that way. So it will be minus 2.5135, offset vertical minus 2.2. Be an tendon, name of tendon, we will call the same. We are called the first tendon, we will call This one spline, as we want to be in this case, a spline. Initial point will be reference point. Uh, the rotation angle, as we can see, must be of the reference line to which will be created the arrangement of the tendons in the inclined wall, must be minus 17.93 degrees. Now we have this option to import the coordinates 2D or 3D. As, uh, as I told you, 
we have 3D coordinates import. So I just copy the coordinates profile of the first tendon. That I can create for several tendons if they share the same reference point. So if I use this uh, reference point, it will be the same for all the left, uh, the tendons of the left uh, uh, inclined wall. Of course, if and I can use, I can copy uh, several times. So all the left, the same if for more groups, I should do the same. So I just start. And we see now that yes, correctly input. Let's see. Uh, top. Front. It seems correctly. Maybe, maybe, yeah. The top of the tendon here yeah, could be uh, different, but there is always time to way to modify. As you can see, you can. Uh, We need two ways to, I don't know why, but we need to check up the reference point. And you see that you have control of, this is the control of the size of the level. And this is the control of the thickness of the tendon. As you can see, I have given 10 centimeter offset horizontal from the central line. And uh, this is the vertical offset from the reference point. So you have your control on the position of the tendon and you can add also some, some additional points. So you can uh, add profile point, for example, if you want to smooth it. You want to smooth it, yeah, you can add here. You can add here to improve manually, of course, but uh, but yeah, you you have this this option to do, and it will automatically increment. And here, let's see this. If you add here, as you can see below, it's it's automatically added the additional points. At 23 station uh, station. So, uh, so what what is important to note is that uh, this this input is uh, the same of uh, civil when uh, when inputting the tendon profile coordinates. So it can be also to D three D. You can choose also the uh, position of the anchorage. And you have what you, what you don't have compared with civil is uh, first of all the 3D view in the main model, but you don't have this little window where uh, you you can control the sites very dynamically according to the to the stationing, uh, and you you can see where where maybe the the, the uh, if which which station your 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 tendon maybe goes goes um, out of the beam since not correctly. So once once you do this, you apply OK, and you see that it's automatically adjusted. So once once done this, what's 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 next? We need to create the analysis phase. Uh, the, the time the time is out, so let's let's create. Uh, this analysis case and let's see the procedure we need we need for doing that uh, in these cases we we need to go as you can see in application we have a tab dedicated to to several uh, uh, which is not anymore for modeling but you have for drawing and analysis construction where you can assign also construction stage you have also API because in the beta version C CIM it's also open to API. So this I will we'll talk in a separate uh, time. Let's let's analyze. So the most important feature we want to analyze the analysis case. So 
we need to define analysis case. In the analysis mode, which is another additional workspace, we can choose among general analysis, 2D analysis, constructor stage. In this, in this case, we want a general analysis. We can call analysis case one, method by select. So we need to select uh, the elements 1D that we want to be analyzed. In this case, it will automatically select uh, the gear and the files to the elements. It will automatically, we need only to select this, this with control. So we will have two walls and two slab, two mesh boundary condition. We should automatically got 20. So uh, Y20, it's uh, four rigid links, uh, eight piles, or elastic link, so it should be okay. Division, now the mesh, let's, uh, how we want to mesh uh, the girder. Let's say every one meter elements, mesh size of 2D every 50 uh, centimeter. The first limitation is this, now it's becoming the, uh, when we come to the load. The only load that we can create automatically also, because it's, uh, it's the self weight load, and this that's it. The rest of the loads must be created in uh, in Midas Civil, and this also makes sense because Midas Civil is a, a FEM analysis software dedicated to input complex loads like moving and not only uh, permanent loads. So we can we can do okay. So now the analysis. If we go in the data analysis case, we have this one, and we can uh, we can go again in uh, in uh, we can close this analysis mode and we can run Midas Civil from here. So in this case, we have three options: run Midas Civil, which is the uh, current version of Civil uh, Civil NX, which is the uh, new Civil uh, which is already uh, released. So you have also optional run in Midas Civil and export to MCT file. So let's run Midas Civil. We will see that we will see that uh, it's opening automatically Civil and uh, it's automatically showing the uh, the model that was created in Civil. So we don't have to do any 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 additional operation, which is uh, quite quite positive in my opinion. And we see the model, how it's being created. So let's see what's, what's created. So the material are the same, the one that we have created in, 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 in CIM, according to the database. He has created the nodes as we wanted, according to the meshing, the elements, beam, and plate. The plate are for the, for the, uh, what, what what we don't see here, what I haven't created the boundary condition for the for connect the girder to the to the nodes of the piers wall. So this this you can do in CIM only connecting the top of the girder with the with the center of the wall as as it was defined in this way. If you remember, we have only one one node. But you can define also different nodes on the top of the wall and connect, but this is quite secondary at the moment. Uh, the, the, the section, like I was saying, uh, the section, if you don't use PSC value in CIM, it will recognize as a general section. General section cannot be used in the PSC design. It is not recognized in PSC design. So this is something that you need to remind. Uh, he has also created taper section group automatically. Uh, let's see. So yeah, as uh, if you remember the uh, the slab here is tapered between the transition zone. That is positive. The thickness of the of the slab on the wall are automatically assigned with the correct uh, uh, offset. Support boundary condition. Like I was saying, all the boundary condition in terms of supports are correctly implemented. Then the rigid link 
uh, also. So you can see that the rigid links are correctly implemented together with the elastic link. Yeah, let's see if the yeah, SDX, SDY, SDZ, so the correct stiffness uh, has been correctly assigned. That is kilonewton by meter. Yeah, so you can see everything has been correctly implemented. And also the tendon, let's see the tendon that we have defined display. And let's see some view first from the top. Seems correctly implemented, modeled. So yeah, let's see the property are exactly the same in this case. You can you can uh, you can also uh, refine the the you can also refine the the coordinates here if you want. So it's always it's always good. Uh, I I would I would rather prefer this in CIM as CIM as uh, as we can see there is better control. But if you need to refine, yeah, you can do it. Um, the limitation, as I said, the uh, first limitation is uh, is about the loads. So every time you need to create a model in CIM, adjust it and send to civil, you need to recreate the loads in civil. Um, uh, so this is first uh, first limitation, which is understandable. Anyway, in civil, you have all the instruments that you can uh, you can uh, you are uh, yeah, more advanced uh, tools to create loads analysis a lot combination and uh, results analysis second limitation is uh, that at the moment is not possible if for example you have some model already created in civil and you want to do the opposite uh, path you want to uh, use a civil model that you have already with the cables, uh, with the section and uh, send to CIM. In this case, uh, uh, in this case, uh, it's not uh, possible. So, at the moment of the stage of the development of CIM, uh, only uh, works when CIM sends the model to civil. And uh, and yeah, I think we have covered everything. Uh, the adjustments, yeah, the adjustment that I I can I can tell in this case if you don't uh, if you don't uh, have finished to create the boundary condition, for example, the piles to the slab uh, and the and the and the, and the, the, the give the top of kita to the top of the of the walls. Uh, in this case, you have to create here. Otherwise, uh, I don't know, but but. But it's not so time consuming sometimes, so it is achievable. Uh, and of course, uh, in this case, we have a, a model for a global analysis without abutments. In case you want to add abutments for another another analysis case, uh, you should come back to C CIM, uh, create the abutments, the object uh, in plate elements to the object like this. But in this case, all the, the loads will be reset. Uh, unless, unless there is a possibility to use uh, MCT file anyway to, to copy and paste the loads that you are already. But you need to always to be careful to the nodes elements to which those loads were assigned. They must match, uh, they must match the previous model. That's it. Thank you.